Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shock Treatment. Today I've got with me Jaden, who is one of our accredited technicians. He's a licensed motorcycle mechanic. He's been working for me for nearly 12 years and he is also an A-grade motocrosser. So having a motocrosser working for us is uh, a real bonus. All of our guys race or are ex-racers like myself. And Jaden is uh, working full time along with three other guys in the workshop here. And uh, his work's meticulous and I have to uh, say I'm very proud of the guys that we've got in our workshop. But this is following on from our 2024 KDM EXC bike. And uh, what we've got here uh, from WP are the, the forks that uh, come on the bike standard. So today what we're going to be doing, rather than pulling down our forks off the bike, because we've already modified those, we've put Racetech gold valves in them, the gold valve is an amazing modification, we'll, we'll explain as to why. And uh, basically Jaden's going to be pulling these forks down and we're going to look at other modifications that we, can, that we can run with as well. Now when we pull these down we'll look at the things that are really concerning to us in terms of getting the maximum tune effect out of these forks. You will see that the build quality of these forks is exceptional and they're very much on par with the KYB Triple S system. They use exactly the same format, very, very similar fluid displacement, so our values are very, very similar. And the biggest difference between this and the KYB is the factory settings on this are quite firm. So anyone that's ridden a Yamaha and then tested a Sherco will say that, oh, the Sherco forks for some reason, the KYBs don't work. And it's not that they don't work, they work fine, they're just firm. And so where Yamaha have uh, an advantage over a lot of other people is that their, their standard settings are to most people's taste. And unfortunately, when people look at a suspension component, they don't value the quality of that component based on, on the materials or based on the technology. They will basically rate that fork or shock on how it feels. Now, the engineering that's in this particular fork is really, really good. The engineering in the Sherco is every bit the same as the Yamaha, but the Yamaha settings seem to be a little nicer. And so with these ones, what we've been doing is testing to get the ultimate ride quality from that particular bike, this particular fork. And what we have here is uh, we have a new part, very, very timely. This is uh, a new bladder uh, conversion kit for these particular forks that come out from Del Soggio. Now, Del Soggio make the best forks I've ever tested, Barna. Okay, so uh, you can look at so many other brands out there, but Del Soggio, I've got the wood on everyone as far as I'm concerned. And their biggest advantage is that inside their pressure reservoir, they have a bladder. Now, the bladder in the fork works exactly the same as putting a bladder in a shock, but the difference being that we're directly connected to the forks, we're physically hanging on to them via the handlebars. And so the effect of the bladder becomes 10 times more apparent than in the shock. You know, in the shock, we've got a lever that's acting on that shock. We're, we're disconnected from it, and yet we still notice the benefits of the bladder. So I'm dead keen to test this out, and I think we're going to get a really, really good result with these forks. So these forks um, uh, are available as a separate item, and so we keep these in stock from WP, and basically, they retail for around $2,700. We sell them for $3,000, completely set up to the rider, so that's uh, with springs and the valving to suit. But uh, these particular parts are gonna sell for around $850. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of testing with this particular set of forks, and we wanna get our settings lined up with this valve, uh, with this um, component and get them the, uh, the best that we can make them. So we're actually going to offer these forks to uh, anyone that's interested. We will uh, be selling these forks with this fully kitted up for, uh, for $3,000 as a one-off. So our demo set, if you like, will be available to whoever's interested and they'll basically save themselves $1,000 or $900. So uh, that's going to be a pretty good buy. But we'll get these pulled down. I've got, got Jaden here, like I said, he's our technician, he can get his hands dirty. Uh, here is the cartridge that we've already pulled out of another set of forks. And so this, um, this reservoir, it'll replace this top section. 
Another unique thing about this is it has a preload adjuster on there as well. So, as I said, this is very similar in design to the KYB fork, um, but we're going to make changes and we'll pull this down and we'll show you what uh, there is in the stock fork that we're not quite happy with, where we would direct our focus for tuning. And, um, you know, if you're a tuner, it'll be a great insight. If you're just a, uh, a guy that wants to ride and get the best out of his bike, well, it'll give you a lot more information to um, uh, talk to your tuner with and basically uh, provide a lot more feedback and um, hopefully get the best ride out of your bike. Just an important thing to note with these ones, on disassembly, WP run a major amount of Loctite on this thread here. Um, so what we do is normally disassembling stuff, we'll use a heat gun. With this, we use the blowtorch because the heat gun, it heats everything up slowly. So it heats all the materials up slower whereas we use the torch, so it just heats this outer piece up, um, melts a bit of that Loctite, and it can come off for us easily. You can see how much Loctite they've got on there. If you don't heat it up, it can cause damage to the threads. So we also use a 12 by one tap and die and clean the Loctite out of here, Loctite's off these threads, and then everything comes off nicely. Also, before you go and do this, make sure you have the right tools. As you can see, we've got the aluminium vice jaws, We've also got the correct shaft clamps, so you don't do any damage to your rod itself. Thanks. Okay, so we've got this pulled apart, and I'll quickly go over this while Jaden continues to work in the background. Guys are trooper, what can I say? Uh, I've actually brought some KYB components here as well, so that we can have a look at this fork compared to the KYB. Now, the KYB has earned the reputation of being the best stock fork out there, and that's because they have the best feeling stock fork out there. This thing, straight out of the box, does not feel as nice as the KYB, but it's nothing to do with the components. The components are, are amazing. And so everything here has the potential to work better than a KYB should you choose to put the effort in. Now, if we look at the, uh, the damping rods in both of these, they have their mid-valve and rebound pistons there. The damper rods are a very, very similar size. And the size of this rod is, is critical because as this rod enters the cartridge, in order for it to fit into the cartridge, which is full of oil, it has to displace an equivalent volume of oil to that rod volume. And it's that volume of oil that gets pushed through these valves. Now here's a, here's a KYB setup, and this, uh, in this particular case, we've actually swapped the standard valve out and we've put a Racetech G2R piston in there. The reason we put the G2R piston in the KYB is it gives us much, much better stroke control again, and we have better bottoming resistance and a plusher initial feel. And so you can do the same with the, the WP. And with the WP, it's, it's a 34 millimeter piston as opposed to 35 in the KYB. So once again, very, very similar dimensions. But one thing I really prefer about the WP versus the KYB is that the WP has uh, much, much smaller ports. It's these three smaller ports that are the compression ports, whereas opposed to four much, much larger ports within the KYB. Now, we'll go over this in another video. We're gonna look at fluid displacement versus the area that it's being displaced over and how that affects uh, uh, performance for a motorcycle. Now, uh, with, uh, with this particular valve, one thing I don't like about it is the check plate. The check plate on this is very, very hard to open, which means it restricts the fluid coming back into the cartridge. So basically, as this rod enters the cartridge and it displaces an equivalent volume of fluid on the compression phase, on the rebound phase, that's gonna be coming back out and that fluid has to refill that chamber ready for the next stroke. So having that being hindered by this, it's, it has you scratching your head, you think, why did they do that? And if you were just to make no other change, but you were to put a, a check valve in there that opens up as freely as this one, straight away you get a performance gain. Traction's improved, control's improved. So this one, a little bit of a head scratcher for mine. Another thing that, uh, that people are gonna find makes the WP4 firm is that the mid valve on this is very, very tight. Now, you'll hear people talk about mid-valve clearances or what they call float. And generally, you'll find that the float will vary from 0.3 of a millimetre up to a millimetre. Some are even larger than a millimetre. And that float is, is 
critical to how much, uh, how much influence the mid-valve has. Now, we never ever want the mid-valve to dominate the base valve. That, that creates all sorts of issues and, uh, and you know, stroke control will suffer if that occurs. Now, this, uh, this is extremely tight and it's causing more influence over the fluid than what I'm comfortable with. The KYB is not as, uh, is not as tight, it's a lot more relaxed and fluid movement to the back of this piston is uh, a lot more efficient on the KYB. Now, that's a simple change, okay? So don't go thinking, oh, well, the KYB is that much better because of this or because of that. This is just a simple adjustment and we can do whatever we want with this. So don't discount this fork. Uh, there are a lot of things I really, really enjoy about this fork. There are a couple of things that uh, uh, you sort of sit there and go, well, well, why did they do that? You know, but Anyway, it's been done, but uh, a very, very easy fork to get working a lot nicer. Now, we're going to put the Del Soggio reservoir in there, and the, the bladder reservoir is obviously going to work so much nicer than these particular reservoirs. These reservoirs, uh, uh, as you can see, they're backed, it's a piston backed up by a spring, and it's extremely hard to move. The bladder just simply compresses and, and restores back to its shape. and. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to give us a much nicer fork movement and it's going to give us a, uh, a plusher feel. We should have a lot more grip as well. But um, compared to the KYB, I couldn't care less if you gave me the WP or the KYB. Both of them are going to work really, really nicely. And uh, I have to say, hats off to KTM for producing this fork or asking WP to produce this fork because We've suffered with the 4CS, we've suffered with the Explore, the Air Fork and so on. And at last we've got something that, uh, that is going to um, be worthy to have on such a motorcycle and it's going to create a lot more customer satisfaction. So uh, we're going to um, do some more changes. We'll actually tune this fork. Jaden's pulling apart the Del Soggios as we speak. And uh, we're going to go and um, get down the track. So Jaden has just completed the fork. He's put the Del Soggio XR kit, uh, the new reservoir onto this particular cartridge. Not only has he put the XR kit in here, but he's also put our type two valve and our type two adjusters on here, which will further improve the, the product yet again. And so with, uh, with the mods that we've made, we're expecting to get much better stroke control, plusher feel, more grip. And we've already made some big gains with these forks. They respond very, very nicely to change, but this, should be the ultimate without going to a full cartridge setup. And uh, we're looking forward to getting down on the track and uh, going testing these. So we'll throw these into the tubes, put them on the bike, and the immortal words of Donnie Schmidt, let's go riding. Okay, so there are our standard forks with gold valves in them. How'd you find it? Really good. Really good? Yeah. Okay. The hold up's good, front end grip's really nice on the track's pretty skatey at the moment, but I'm not really struggling for grip anywhere, so. Beautiful. Feels really good. Okay, you're puffing a bit, mate. You were supposed to be an athlete. Far from. <laughs> <laughs> Test rider now. Yeah. Okay, let's get those other forks in and see how they go. Okay, so we had a really good result with the, uh, the original forks that we put gold valves into, but we've done a lot of development on those and we knew we were going to get a good result. So now we've put the Del Soggio forks in there fresh and uh, keen to see how we go on the track and I'm awaiting Jaden's feedback. Obviously we don't care whether he, he says they're hard or soft, we'll adjust them to suit and the whole purpose about this is dialing them in to get the absolute best uh, outcome that we can. So let's get to the track. How'd you go? Good. 
Good. Yeah, like just anything small bump feel. Yep. But you could feel it a little bit before, even though it was much better than standard. It's basically gone now. Right. And, and grip? The front end grip is even better again. Really? Yeah. Okay. So the only thing, they probably dive a little bit more, just a little bit in the stroke, but... Okay. Um, that's an easy change that we can make. But yeah, well, that's just due to the lack of friction. You know, yeah. you take friction away, friction's working like a damping source, yeah. so... Um, but everyone by, else uh, says, yeah, yeah, no negatives. No negatives? No negatives. Okay, well, let's make it a little bit firmer and uh, get you to do another couple laps while well, you're still fit. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Thanks. Okay. How we go? Good. Tiny bit more bottoming resistance. Okay, so I wanted like, it out once. Oh, did you? Okay, so yep. just raise the oil level yep, a bit. I don't we'll... want to touch anything else for it. Yep. Okay. But yeah, just off one of the flatland jumps off that. Yep. And into one of the gullies, into a few bumps. It just felt like it rode a bit low, but. Well, because we've eliminated a lot of friction, we're actually obviously going to use a bit more of the yep. stroke. But what oil volume did you put in the outside chain? 380. 380. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to 385, and we'll go from there. Yep. Maybe 390. We'll see how we get on. Cool. Okay, beautiful. Back to the workshop. Back to the workshop. So we're back in the workshop. We had a really, really good result. But uh, now that Jaden's uh, managed to catch his breath, uh, we'll have a little conversation and see where we're going to go from here. Uh, as it turns out down there, he'd be pretty happy to ride on those all day. But um, uh, we're all about going forward. We don't want to stand still. We basically want to keep moving and pushing the, the boundaries. But um, we had a, a very good feeling fork with the standard fork with gold valves in them. They were working nicely. And now we've gone better again with the Del Soggio inserts, which we knew we would. I mean, it's just a, um, it's, it's nothing to do with suspension theory. This is just sound physics. And um, the fact is we've eliminated a hell of a lot of friction. But uh, uh, so that's gonna naturally give you a nicer feel. But how did you find it? Uh, basically just compared to the other fork, just Every little rock bump, you could see it was there, but you couldn't feel it was there. Right. With the other fork, you could see it was there, you could feel it. It wouldn't do anything. The front wheel wouldn't snap out of your hands or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But you could definitely feel it coming through the actual front end of the bike. Right. Which made it a little unnerving, but yeah, every, everything I threw at it, it didn't step out. But then threw the new ones in again, and yeah, you couldn't even you could see them, and that was the end of it. Okay, it didn't cool. Didn't have anything, and then yeah, just front end grip, I found myself yeah. trying to turn the way I did on the other forks and actually turn it in sharper and right. messing up a couple of turns just because it was, yeah, I was expecting it to do something different. So the grip level was that much better? Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you were to say uh, in terms of percentage, uh, the modified fork or our Del Soggio fork versus the the uh, standard fork with gold valves in them, uh, how big a difference would you say? It'd be easier, 10 to 15%. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah. So you seem to be pushing a lot harder with the uh, Del Soggio forks and and you came back saying that you're using more of the stroke and, and so we made it a little bit firmer. Yeah. And from that we're now going to increase our oil volume within that fork just to hold up that, um, that last portion of the stroke. The reason we're going to go for oil volume is that we don't want to upset the feel that we've got now. We've got a really, really good feel. Just want to um, control that bottom area of the stroke and oil level will do that for us. So where we're at now is very good. We're going to make those changes. We'll go down and do some more testing and um, uh, hopefully uh, find other things to improve on. But uh, so far, really, really good. Very happy. And uh, riding well out there, mate. Thank you. Okay. Bit hot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful okay. weather. Right out. Okay. We'll see you in the next video.